Hi there, I'm Jack, and when I was three years old, my parents made me take an IQ test. And when I failed it, they sent me away for adoption. Crazy, right? But before I tell you the rest of my story, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell icon, and give this video a thumbs up to show your support for me. I cried for three whole days when my parents gave me up. I couldn't understand why they just left me with strangers. But after the third day, I stopped. My adoptive parents were really nice. They spoiled me with things my birth parents never gave me. Mom was always home, and Dad always brought me stuff from his business trips. And on holidays, he made sure to be home so we could take Mom and I on vacation. My birth parents never even gave me my own room. They made me sleep in the basement with just a piece of cardboard to lie on. As time passed, I grew to learn that it was much better that they actually put me up for adoption. My new mom and dad loved me a lot, and they sent me to the best schools. My new parents were loaded. They opened an account for me with a million bucks in it. I realized I was set for life. And even though my birth parents only thought of how to get rid of me, they accidentally given me a life they could have never given me themselves. One day, just before I graduated high school, my dad pulled me aside for a talk. Son, you know mom and I love you very much. What is it, dad? You look like you're about to say something scary. Oh, no, not scary at all. It's just that... Uh, well, your mom and I... We've always wanted a son like you, and we made a vow to raise you properly. We don't want you to grow up dependent on just being rich... We want you to know the value of hard work. So we thought, maybe you could go out there and look for a part-time job. Was that all? <laughs> I thought you were going to drop some sort of bombshell. Of course, I'll do it, Dad. If you think it'll help me, then I'll do it. I didn't get into any colleges anyway. At least I can go out there and do something useful. So? That summer, I started working at a hotel nearby. They paid very little, so I made sure I didn't use my car and only went there by foot or on my bicycle. I only ever ate at the staff cafeteria where the food was free or I'd bring lunch from home. That way, I never spent a dime while I was working and every penny I made, I saved. I wish I could tell you working there was a breeze. It was a hotel exclusively for billionaires. So you'd think everything was amazing, but nah, I had an insanely gorgeous boss, but despite her angelic looks, she was absolutely evil and violent. She always picked on people, especially those who worked for her. One time, she even shouted at some customers, telling them to leave immediately and never return. It was no wonder the hotel had lots of one-star reviews. Despite having to do lots of work and doing it for insanely rich people, we got paid peanuts. Our boss didn't even give us our tips. She kept all of it to herself. I was just planning on staying until the end of the summer. I told myself I could just ask Dad if I could work at his company, even if I could just be the cleaner. I knew I had barely any experience, but it would be working at the hotel. Every day, my boss would make me clean up all the worst messes. It was like she was picking on me for some reason. She made me clean her car and get her dry cleaning. She made me take her badly behaved, overly aggressive tiny dogs walking. She'd also make me give her foot massages. I mean, seeing as she was incredibly beautiful, some guys would probably do anything just to touch her. But as soon as you knew her, you'd pay any price just to be as far from her as possible. Besides, her foot stank to high heaven. Just when I'd had enough of her taking advantage of me, and I was about to enter her office to hand in my resignation, my phone rang. It was my dad. He never usually called me at work, so I figured it must be important. When I picked up, I knew something was wrong. His voice was all... weird, and he sounded really sad. What happened, Dad? Are you alright? He did a little chuckle. <laughs> I'm so sorry, son. It's not our fault, I, I promise you. We were framed. Framed? What? Tell me what happened, Dad. Where's Mom? 
she's with me. But <laughs> we... <laughs> we're in jail, son. Your birth parents, we... Well, we walked right into their trap. When they found out we were rich, they started asking for money. We've been giving them some to thank them for giving you to us, but then they wouldn't stop. So when we refused to give them any more money, they... They went to our business rivals. They got us involved in a scam. I, I swear, we didn't know. They framed us. Don't worry, Dad. I'll get you out of there. What about your lawyers? They've left, son. They've all left. Our rivals have taken over, and there's nothing I can do from here. I'm really sorry. I knew he was telling the truth, and I was going to do whatever it took to prove that they were innocent. I didn't end up quitting that day. I still had that bank account, and with it, I paid for college. I got private tutors to help me out in subjects I had trouble with. I would stay up some nights to put an extra effort in my studies. All the while, I kept my job at the hotel to make sure I was still earning. I hired a private detective to help me gather evidence that could help my parents. I was determined to infiltrate my dad's old company. And if I was going to do it, I needed an impressive resume. At first, I didn't want to get a girlfriend because I knew it would be a distraction. But I met a girl in school, and Giselle was very adamant on dating me. Perhaps I shouldn't have told her about my life, because from the moment she knew who my parents were, she didn't leave me alone. Until one day, I agreed to be her boyfriend. It was nice at first. She always made me lunches and would be very sweet to me at school. But whenever I told her I needed to go to work, she would pout and ignore me for days. Why do you even need to work? Don't you have, like, a ton of money? It's not my money, and I needed to help my parents. Ugh, you're so stupid. Bye, don't call me. You can only talk to me if you buy me a designer bag. As unlikely as it was, I had actually gotten attached to Giselle. And it hurt when she ignored me. So I bought her the bag she always told me she wanted, and then she talked to me again. After a lot of hard work, I eventually got promoted as the night manager. And one day, I had the weirdest thing happen. When we were looking for new cleaners, I found out that my birth parents applied for the job and that I'd hired them. I didn't recognize them at first, but then they approached me, asking for a raise. They thought I didn't know what they did to my mom and dad. But I did. Apparently, the money they made from framing my parents was all gone. They'd lost it to gambling. Please, son, you know we're proud of you. You're a manager now. Who would have thought? You were so dumb as a kid. I immediately fired them. And as they left, I told them I knew what they did. They ran with fear in their eyes. Don't you dare come looking for us. Little did they know, I had a private detective watching them. As I was working late at the hotel one night, Giselle called me. She was annoyed that I wasn't spending time with her, and she didn't want to hear my explanation about why I needed to work. She hung up on me. As I was talking to guests at the hotel lounge, I saw Giselle storm in through the hotel doors. She shouted so loud, even the people at the third floor might have heard her. She immediately threw a tantrum, letting everyone hear that her boyfriend is always at work and never had time for her anymore. It was so embarrassing. There were at least 20 customers at the lobby that night, and when they witnessed that display, some of them gave me dirty looks. Some of them even hurried out of the hotel, saying they didn't want to stay at a place so unprofessional that employees had fights in front of everyone. My boss grabbed me by my clothes and threw me to the floor. She had security remove Giselle, and she dragged me into her office. You're fired! But, ma'am... Please, it wasn't my fault. I didn't know she'd come here. I don't know why she was here. I don't care. Pack your things and don't ever let me see you here again. I did as she said before she could threaten to call the police. That was the last thing I needed. I wouldn't be able to free my parents if I was in jail too. I went to Giselle's place. I had no choice. I had no one else left. I wanted to say sorry for everything, but instead, she just laughed in my face. You got fired? 
<laughs> Serves you right. I'm sorry? I didn't mean to not answer your texts. Ha! <laughs> you think that's gonna make me forgive you? You choose your work over me, and now you're fired. <laughs> you deserve it. <laughs> your only job in that hotel is to sit around at night, and you can't even do that right. <laughs> you really are stupid. I lost my patience for a second. I got fired because of you. If you weren't such a needy little princess, I'd still have my job. Giselle's face soured. Then she shut her door. I never heard from her after that. One day, she sent me a text that said we were over.